there, there I think people, uh, a lot of that has to do with the uh, crossing over or th going through a portal. That's one of the things that we have found out is that you you take people. Uh, first of all, it takes some difficulty. You have to really want to go to Burning Man to be there. So there is a pilgrimage. And then you come to this place that is a world apart from what you're used to. And that is part of the process of uh, creating a community and uh, making enculturation happen. We're like a desert tribe out here, and we've learned to survive together. And uh, people depend on each other. But that doesn't happen so much in the other world because they've grown up in this reality. And in order to break out of that, in order to create new social bounds, you have to strip that away. And that's what we do at Burning Man. You come out to this broad desert and leave the other world behind. And in a similar way, a second life is a world apart. And it, it allows incredible creativity. Right. I, I, one thing that one struck thing me over the years, the years uh, both, both with Second Life, Second Life and with, and with Burning, Man, Burning Man, is the sense, sense that, that, you know, despite, yeah, despite both having, having the sense of, you know, inclusiveness, inclusiveness and, and, and being, being welcome and open to, to anybody, anybody, that, that people, who've people who have been, who been, been there a long, long time, time kind of take on a, a little bit of a sense of, you know, hey, this is our this is our place. We've been here. You know, you you're newbies, and you know you need to know how things go. I wonder, you know, what you think about that. Whether whether you see that, or or you know, whether you think that's a legitimate thing, or do you think that you know anybody who shows up, you know, is should be allowed to create from whole cloth. Well, I would think that the people who have been there uh, in the early days will uh, remember that they were once here for the first time too. So that's part of the, the enculturation process that we try to uh, uh, have happen at Burning Man. And there's a lot of things that we've been able to do with that. Uh, we've built uh, neighborhoods, uh, communities, where it's like it was in the, the early days, a very small group. We've got uh, now neighborhoods and uh, Larry, can you talk us about a little bit about the city layout and how that has happened? The city layout? <clears throat> well, it's actually a mirror of the first Burning Man. We stood in a semicircle at the at the uh, uh, at the tide's edge at Baker Beach in San Francisco, forming a semicircle around an eight-foot uh, stick uh, man. And, and set it aflame. Uh, the city now forms a semicircle, the center of which uh, is, uh, well, a, a man who's considerably taller than eight feet, and, and just as at the first uh, iteration of Burning Man, uh, the, uh, uh, the landscape uh, stretches off uh, into a kind of infinitude beyond, uh, very like the, the background uh, outside this room here. And uh, 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 so in that sense, there's a kind of uh, radical continuity in, in things. You know, there's another thing that is wonderful uh, that connects these two worlds, and that is the transience of digital objects. You know, Second Life, of course, you know, one of the goals of Second Life normally is to keep all this stuff uh, available, you know, to essentially keep the digital information from being, you know, reduced to vapor uh, by, you know, servers breaking down or something like that. But, but in the digital world, like on the playa, although it takes some more work on the playa than here, there's an ability to just delete uh, and and return to chaos, if you will, you know, return to nothing. The things that you've built, and since you invest time and energy in building those things, there is that same sort of you know cathartic moment uh, in the idea that you can make things just go away. Um, and and I, I always thought, and I, I mean, I'm sure you guys would agree that uh, you know a, a, a great deal of the magic of Burning Man was not the literal, not just the literal burning up of, of figures uh, like the man, but also the idea that you know when the event is over, the desert is left 
in its neutral condition, that is, you know, containing no information <laughs> that would tell you about the event itself. And at, at the th neat thing about Second Life is that we can do exactly the same thing. Everything that has been built here um, is unplugged at, at some point in the near future here. And it literally, in, in every sort of physical sense of, of the, you know, uh, of the word, is, is deleted. There is a parallel uh, to that, I would say, though, that does happen at Burning Man. Even though we do erase all the, the physical aspects of what we have built, there is something that remains. There is a kind of data in that we have learned from the experience, and we can take all of that, that knowledge and we can reconstitute it. We can figure out what didn't work last year and what did work. And we take that and use that information, that data, to recreate the next event. So the combination of knowledge and information combined with experience, the experience of those who have come before at the last event brings them back and they bring more people. I want to talk a little bit more about the sort of the digital side of things uh, from what Burning Man has gotten involved in. You know, um, Burning Life, you know, you guys are sort of specifically involved in now and over the last couple of years, the, the Google um, Earth, or sorry, the, the, the Burning Earth, I think that's what it's called, the project with uh, Google Earth um, and, and Burning Man art blending together um, has, has come about. And I'm wondering, you know, if you see those, what, what different purposes you see those two projects serving the community? There are several experiments that are going on, um, explorations, if you will, and uh, the Google, uh, the Burning Man Earth is one of those projects. And in a sense, the uh, uh, regional group, the Second Life Regional Group, is is also. But if you look at the way the technology is uh, growing and evolving, I foresee sometime in the future when you can wear goggles or sunglasses with a heads-up display and walk around in the desert at Burning Man and still be in contact with someone who's behind a computer screen in say Australia or somewhere on the other side of the world and they could actually put up an avatar in front of you on the desert through your viewing screen and you could communicate and talk to people all over the world using that kind of technology. But for right now the main difference between Google Earth and uh, Burning Life is uh, that there's no people in Google Earth, there's no community. And that's what we're really concerned with building here. Yes, although Google Life can become uh, eventually, I think, a portal to uh, connections. And one, one, one could, uh, uh, at Burning Man, for instance, it's notoriously difficult to, uh, to see everything. It's absolutely impossible to see everything, just as it is here. In, in, in Second Life, but um, but by uh, coursing through the, 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 the Google analog of our event, you could experience uh, uh, many works of art, and having experienced them, then, then you use uh, that connection as a portal by which you could f discover the uh, social reality personal reality behind the artwork, which uh, behind every great artwork out there, large-scale work, uh, they're, used to, they're standing an entire community of people. And, uh, and so it could be, be used as a, a way of, uh, of, of social contact by that means. It's going to be a form of social, of uh, digital memory, 